Sneed, Councilman Stokes, uh, Councilman Castello, Councilman Castello as co sponsors, Councilman Speck as co sponsor, Tim recognizes Councilman Clark. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be part of an investigative hearing. It's my first month in 32 years on the council. What a reason. That's what's happened sometimes. So basically, this isn't happening. This turnoff is not happening. Certainly not on a regular basis. And the investigation and sleuthing that I'm asking for, thank you all for, for uh, signing on. And I hope we can, I know we have great leaders of both agencies, so I know when we get into the same room, we can work out what's going wrong here and how to fix it. Thanks. Thank you. This has been the signs of the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Resolution 20 0204 r everyone counts, for the purpose of recognizing the importance of reaching all residents of Baltimore City in the 2020 census, particularly hard to count residents. Sponsor Cohen, President Scott, Bullock, Henry, Burnett, Pinkett, George Street Park, and Craig Middleton. Please add Councilman Sneed, Councilman Cypher as co sponsors, Councilman Stokes as the co sponsor, Chair recognizes Councilman Cohen. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as we all know, the census is coming up, and the census is absolutely critical that we make sure that everyone in Baltimore counts. This means we will, if we are unable to get our count up, we will not get the federal funds that we need and deserve, and we will not have the representation that we need and deserve. And I will say that we know there is an effort underway to suppress the census, I know that your previous resolution, Mr. President, in my district, when I got into council, we had two men get picked up by ICE outside of Walgreens, and a week later, we had a father drop off his nine-year-old child and get taken right outside his son's school. This sends a terrifying message into our immigrant community. They are one of our hard-to-count populations. There is an intentional effort to make cities like Baltimore that are welcoming, pay, and not be able to get our full count. But I will simply say to all Baltimoreans that we have got to show up for the census. It is critical for our future, for our education, for health care, and for our representation. And Mr. President, I move for immediate adoption. Move to suspend the rules for immediate adoption. Without objection, the rules will be suspended. The rules are suspended. Roll call. President Scott. Yes. Councilman Cohen. Yes. Councilman McCray. Yes. Councilman Dorsey. Yes. Councilman Henry. Yes. Councilman Schleicher. Yes. Vice President Middleton. Yes. Councilman Pink. Yes. Councilman Burnett. Yes. Councilman Bullock. Yes. Vice President Ashton. Councilman Carcello. Yes. Councilman Stokes. Yes. Councilman C. Yes. Councilman Cross. Yes. The motion is approved. This resolution has been adopted. Councilman Jackson just saying, what's the new uh oh, Councilman Cornwood? I will yeah, make sure that it's out on the councilman's desk. It's a resolution, not a not a charter. It's just for the purpose of setting the commission of service to review the charter that uh for the city council in which is 13 and the idea was just having a more robust conversation with the community and also um, being able to count 13 representatives, one from each council district, actually the law department, finance department, equity and civil rights, the mayor's also children and family success, and the University of Baltimore Law School and the Courage School of Law. So it's a more robust conversation. So the community system will know exactly. Mr. Um, sure Dollar. Thank you, Mr. President. Really an incredible team. Uh, out of 11 senior staff members, uh, four of those members are black, two are Asian, uh, eight of them are women, three of them are in, third, in their 30s. Uh, Kirby's really built a team uh, that truly reflects what our city looks like and who our city is. Um, when you get down to the operational level, um, 75% of the operations team uh, identify with the minority. Uh, Kirby uh, took the lead when we were debating ensure that everyone on the operations team at downtown partnership is getting paid fifteen dollars an hour. Uh, since uh, 2011, over seven major developments um, have uh, come to fruition in the central business 
district. For a city that's 30th in the country in terms of overall population, uh, we are punching far outside of our weight class. We have the 11th most residents in the downtown area and the 14th most employees uh, in the entire nation. Uh, but some of the things that uh, Kirby and his team have been able to do, many of which you all are familiar with, uh, co creating the global uh, arts situation. For the first one, uh, Trevor Amendment, because uh, I move with a favorable report. We have amendments to this one. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a amendment from the floor. I move the amendment. It should be on council members' desk. This is the amendment offered by the finance department to restore the line item veto capability <laughs> in the charter amendment, which lowers the threshold needed for the council to override a veto from three fourths. There was one amendment that uh, was approved by the committee. I move the committee's amendments. All of those were. I'm sorry. The committee's amendment was a clarification recommended by the law department with the approval of the sponsor, Congressman Dorsey, to make it clear that the point of the charter amendment was to ensure that the council always got an opportunity to override a mail veto. The clarification was to make it explicit that that ability did not go across terms. So if an outgoing council passed something and an outgoing mayor vetoed it, the next council could not be the council to overturn that veto. And so that's what the amendment, that's what the amendment was. Yeah, the next term. Yeah, the next term. Thank you. All those in favor of approving the amendment say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Amendments are approved. Chair House and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Resolution 19 0179 R. Informational Hearing. BGE Plan Power. Chair recognizing Councilman Gura. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the House of Affairs Committee heard this bill or this resolution on February 25th, 2020. Uh, there are no amendments. I believe the resolution is favorable. All those in favor of approving this resolution say aye. aye. All those say nay. Aye. The motion approved this resolution is adopted. Language committee. City Council Bill 19 0462 zoning conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to three dwelling units in the R8 zoning district. Variance 2112 St. Paul Street. Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. There are amendments on my colleague's desk. I move that amendment. All those in favor of approving the amendment say aye. 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 Say nay. The amendments are approved. Chair recognizes the council on the seat. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to their reading. City Council Bill 19 0480 zoning use standards neighborhood commercial establishments. Chair recognizes the council on the seat. Thank you, Mr. President. The they call a hearing on the bill on the bill March on March 4th. There are amendments on my colleague's desk. I move the amendments. All those in favor, this is five minutes of facts. No. All those in favor of approving this amendment say aye. Aye. All those say nay. The amendments are approved. You recognize the council on the seat. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorable as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. All those say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to Thursday night. The amendments are approved. Chair recognizes the council's item. I'd like to move the bill favorable as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to Thursday night. I thank the uh, youth councilman from the 9th district has probably landed in this Thursday night will find the best. City Council Bill 19 0368 Police Ordinances. 1141 Poplar Grove Street. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dawson, Henry, Schweitzer, Middleton, Kingsley, Burnett, Bullock, Costello, Stokes, Steve Clark. District Chair, I mean, please know Councilman Slope, Councilman Clark, sorry, as you know, this was the first. City Council Bill 20 0486, Private Security Camera System Rebate and Voucher Program Establishment. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dawson, Henry. No. Lifer, 
Mayor Middleton, Kinky, Burnett, Rollout, Costello, Stokes, Smee, Clark. Please know Councilman Wilson has no this bill is approved. And maybe the announcements. She recognizes Councilman Smee. Thank you, Mr. President. The Land Use Committee will hold a hearing on resolution 19 0159 r Investigating hearing building backups of untreated sewage on Tuesday, March 17, 2020, at 10 a.m. The will also hold a hearing. For the mayor's office, mayor's commission on disabilities, Eric Davis, Adam Levine, also for the planning commission, Eric Stevenson, and also for the board of ethics, Arnold H. Samson. Thank you. Thank you. Is it recognized the council Castello? Thank you, Mr. President. Budget Appropriations Committee uh, will hold hearing on Tuesday, March 31st, at 501 p.m. Legislative Oversight 19 0060, Budget Oversight Hearing for the Baltimore City Police Department. And the Judiciary Committee will hold hearing on Tuesday, March 31st, at 10 a.m. Council 20 0505, Building Fire and Related Codes, 2020 Edition. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to suspend Rule 10-2 and 10-3 to announce the hearing. I'll put objection. The rule will be suspended. The rule is suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee will hear Bill Number 20-0503. Thursday, March 19, 2020, here at Council Chambers at 10 a.m. And it's the University of Maryland at Baltimore approving the application for designation as a rise of granting enhanced local property tax credit. And I also move to spend rule 10-2 and 10-3 to announce here. Final objection to the rules will be suspended. The rules are suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Taxation Finance and Economic Development Committee will hear bill number 20-0205-R, Thursday, March 26, 2020, here at Council Chambers at 10 a.m. It's an informational hearing implementing the Water Accountability and Equity Act. Thank you. Thank you. She recognized Council Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, she recognized Council Presso. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to clarify that I've seen on the first uh, motion because I've accused myself from that bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Do you recognize the council side? Thank you, Mr. President. The Public Safety Committee will hold a hearing on March 31st, 2020 at 5 p.m. on monthly projects. This is a private project that for certain construction projects in Baltimore City. Please note that the uh, council vice president will be the same in that matter. Do you recognize the council council? Thank you, Mr. President. I forgot to suspend rules for one of my announcements. I move to suspend rules 10-2 and 10-3 to announce the By objection, the rules will be suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Judiciary Committee will hold hearing on Tuesday, March 31st at 10 a.m. Council Bill 20-0505, Building Fire and Related Codes, 120 edition. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, he says, always, thank you for being here. And I also uh, would like to ask the Council Vice President to honor a moment of silence for now 53 uh, victims of homicide in Baltimore City in 2020, and all of those that we lost the overdose as well. Uh, and we also like to ask Councilman uh, Burnett if he would give us a quick recap of the coronavirus hearing for the public from, from last week. The hearing that I called for the Councilman was here for the duration. So, Councilman Burnett. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so we held our first hearing on the coronavirus. Uh, we're actually working to have regular hearings as additional updates uh, occur. Uh, but we had a very lengthy presentation from the health department to be able to advise on how local citizens can protect themselves and uh, a lot of detailed information on the city's plans um, to prevent any outbreak from occurring and, and also plans that if one does occur, what we should expect from the health department, from Office of Emergency Management. We also heard from Baltimore City Schools that provided all their contingency plans uh, related to uh, if an incident was to occur uh, at an individual school, as well as more information on the district-wide plan for uh, the possibility of a coronavirus pandemic. Um, 
you know, obviously we, at, at every presentation, the, the, the same thing reoccurred, which is follow the CDC recommendations and guide, guidelines. Uh, I would also encourage all of my colleagues to sign up for updates on the health department's website, uh, it's health.baltimorecity.gov. Uh, there are regular postings and information on how you can protect yourself, protect your family, and guidance on, um, you know, large events and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but it was a very informative hearing. We're going to continue to do these hearings uh, as things evolve. Uh, but hopefully we are going to be in a good place moving forward. But uh, as always, uh, you probably heard a thousand times we're advising people to, to fist bump. Uh, <coughs> you can wash your hands sterilely. Uh, do not maintain close contact. Don't go on long trips or cruises. Um, and just, again, continue to sign, sign up for our pace. Reach out. We must continue to uh, celebrate this month with um, the history of women. And uh, uh, this is also the time where their uh, women are celebrating the rights to vote. Um, we continually celebrate um, and fight for equality and pay raises and, and so on. So um, please join us in um, continuing to celebrate and work hard for women that are definitely part of Baltimore, Maryland, and the U.S. And also I want to add a moment of silence for the victims of the coronavirus. So on that note, the next meeting of the City Council will be held on Monday, March 24, 2020 at 5 p.m. And may we have a moment of silence for the families of the victims of the coronavirus and also the 53 homicides to date and also for the families of the um, continued opioid epidemic. There being no further business, this concludes the Senate at the end of the Senate's term of Baltimore City Council. Vamos a finalizar esta transmisión y ahorita regresamos.